In the real world, peers are likely behind NAT networks or restricting firewalls. In such cases, it is impossible to make a direct connection, at least not without a traversal strategy. That's where the ICE framework and the stun and turn servers enter. In WebRTC apps, you use the ICE framework to overcome these complexities. To do so, just pass the ICE server URLs when you create your RTC peer connection object. During signaling, the ICE framework will try to find the best path to connect peers and will choose the most efficient one. While this is happening, both peers will be sending those ICE candidates to the other peer. So this is the process. First, the ICE framework will try to make a connection using the host address obtained from a device operating system. If that doesn't work, then a stun server will be used to get the external or public network address. If still it's not possible to make a connection, then a turn server will be used to relay traffic. So now we have the whole picture. First, each client will get access to users' media devices. Then an RTC peer connection is created and the signaling process begins. Such process consists of two concurrent tasks. First, both peers will exchange the offer and answer messages and also both peers will ask a stun server for their external IP addresses and will be sending those as ICE candidates to the other peer. If for some reason such connection is not possible, then a turn server is used as a relay. And that's the whole picture of how WebRTC work. When you're ready, move to the next lesson.